Hey guys and girls, how's it going? So this is my second Dragon Age video. This is on Dragon Age 2 and it's the story so far. So the aim of this video again is just to give you guys a bit of an overview of the main story and characters in Dragon Age 2. Um, and it's basically aimed at those people that haven't played the first or second game and are planning to play Inquisition. Um, or you are playing it right now if you're in North America, call me jealous. Um, or if you have played the games but you, you just want a bit of a recap cap so suffice it to say there are spoilers galore in this video all right so let's get cracking let's get on with it anyway so this story um obviously within this video is unique to me this is a bioware game guys so the decisions that you make in the story uh, during the story do very much affect the events that occur so while there are certain key things that are the same across the board there are certain decisions that i made in this story that are going to be a little bit different so dragon age 2 is very very different to Dragon Age 1. It's got a very different overall sort of feel and theme, whereas Origins revolves around this idea of a great evil that must be fought and, and killed, Dragon Age 2 is much more about the characters and it's a lot more about political intrigue and, and human weaknesses and it's not really a black or white tale of good and evil, it's, it, it's much greyer than that and it predominantly revolves around the escalating tensions between the Mages and the Templars which basically comes to a head at the end of the game. So the story spans about a decade in total, about 10 years, and it follows the experiences of the main character, a guy called Garrett Hawk um, who ultimately becomes known as the champion of Kirkwall now in my game I played as a mage character because that just felt like it it was right for the story and, and for, for his experiences now the actual game is split into three acts so I'm going to tell you basically what happens in each one now we are we do obviously start with a prologue and at the beginning of the story um, it sort of shows you um, two characters you've got Cassandra Pentagast and she's basically a seeker sort of a warrior type character and then you have a dwarf by the name of Varric Tethras. Now it starts off with an interrogation and Cassandra is basically interrogating Varric to find out where the champion of Kirkwall actually is and she wants him to tell her tell her about the actual events that happened in Kirkwall that affects you know the situation at the time. So it basically the way the story is told it's sort of told in flashbacks um, throughout the game and occasionally it will cut back to Varric and the overall story is sort of told through the the perspective of Varric who is obviously you know the the one of the best friends of of uh, Hawk so let's get started anyway so at the beginning of the prologue um, when he flashes back it actually starts the game begins right near the beginning of Dragon Age Origins and it actually takes place just after the Battle of Ostagar now Hawk his mother brother and sister are fleeing from the town of Lothar which has been attacked by the Darkspawn after after the battle and um, Lothering is basically being completely destroyed um, and pillaged and you're pretty much fighting your way um, out of the town and through the sort of sort of um, roads through the Darkspawn and ultimately your family decide that they're going to try to seek safety in Kirkwall um, which is quite a big city because your uncle um, actually lives there. Now as you're fighting through the Darkspawn and on your journey you actually meet uh, two new characters. You meet Aveline uh, or Aveline, um, Valen um, and her injured husband Wesley. Now Wesley is a member of the Templar Order so straight away he looks at you with a form of suspicion because you're a mage and Templars don't really trust mages at this time. Ultimately, as you're fighting your way through, um, you become overrun and surrounded. There are too many Darkspawn to, to fight to make it out. However, you are saved by a high dragon, a huge purple dragon that flies down, picks up the Darkspawn, breathes fire and, and everything. It's a really cool scene. Actually, it turns out that the High Dragon is none other than Flemeth herself, the Witch of the Wilds. Um, she basically strikes a deal with you and she, she agrees to take you to safety, to take you to a town called Guaran, where you can then get a ship to Kirkwall, if you agree to carry a special amulet um, 
amulet, sorry, to a Dalish keeper in the Free Marches. Um, unfortunately, Wesley is struck down by a Darkspawn blade and therefore is, is tainted and ultimately Aveline is forced to kill her husband and you do agree to this deal with Flemeth and she magics you out, flies you out, whatever she does, she takes you to safety. It then cuts to you arriving in Kirkwall um, after being on a ship and as you get to Kirkwall, um, the city is, is clearly in chaos because all the refugees from Ferelden are fleeing the Darkspawn and they're all trying to, to, you know, to enter Kirkwall and they're being refused entry. So as soon as you get there, you're, you're refused entry, you're not allowed inside Kirkwall and ultimately you have to call for the help of your uncle and your uncle um, appears. His name is is uh, Gamlin, and um, basically, originally, uh, your mother Leandra, um, her family is actually quite wealthy. They were nobility, and they had an estate in the city. However, Gamlin unfortunately has um, lost this estate due to his sort of gambling debts and ultimately you are forced to actually agree to work for a smuggler um, called Athenril and you agree basically to a year's worth of indentured servitude in order to pay and bribe the guards for you to be able to enter Kirkwall and that's what you do and that's the end of the prologue. We then cut to Act 1. Now Act 1 is all about Hawk and Varric and Act 1 takes place one year later and it, it occurs after the blight has has been defeated and great tales of the hero of Ferelden have reached you know uh, Kirkwall and you know the first game is ended now Hawk basically at the end of the year is now free he's no longer working um, for the for the um, smugglers however he has gained a lot of reputation um, as a man that gets the job done and Unfortunately, the family is still living in poverty in Low Town with their uncle, and it is basically Hawk's goal to protect his mother, to support his mother, and his ultimate goal is to regain his estate, regain his nobility, um, and in order to do that, he needs money. So he meets up with a dwarf called uh, Bartrand Tetherin, and um, he's planning an expedition into the Deep Roads because the Darkspawn have been defeated. The Deep Roads roads um, are not as as dangerous as they would usually be in the middle of a blight because that's where the darkspawn comes from and they're basically planning an expedition into the deep roads in order to um, basically loot for treasure and any any sort of relics that they can sell off and make money on now obviously it's a great opportunity for hawk so he tries to get in on that deal and bartrand doesn't want to have anything to do with him and he refuses to hire him in his party you then actually meet Varric. Now, Varric is the brother, the brother of Bartrand, and he becomes one of our best friends in the game. He's one of my favorite characters in Dragon Age 2. I absolutely love him, so I can't wait to play with him um, in Inquisition. I'm so excited. I love Varric. He's brilliant. Um, and Bianca, which is the name that he gives to his crossbow. And it's just epic. But anyway, we basically we talk with Varric, and Varric basically reveals that the only way that Bartran is going to accept us as a member is that we need two things. We need to get 50 um, sovereigns, and we also need a map um, which details the deep roads so that you know the mission's gonna be much more successful successful and it won't be as dangerous. So suffice it to say the majority of the rest of Act One is all side missions. It's us doing things, helping people, getting money um, in order to get those 50 sovereigns. Now Varric discovers a rumor that that a Grey Warden is within Kirkwall, and uh, obviously the Grey Wardens are also very famous for 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 exploring the deep roads and killing Darkspawn. So Varric obviously tells you to go and speak to the Grey Warden and to try and get some kind of deal where I'm sure he will have a map that that basically maps the Grey the the uh, deep roads. So you end up getting the 50 sovereigns and then we also track down the grey warden and the grey warden's name is anders he's an ex-grey warden actually um and um 
he is also a mage and he's he's very very bitter against the templars and he kind of he wants mages to be free to be independent he has a strong hatred for the circle of magi because he just feels like they've been controlled and tethered and and dominated um by the templars and by the chantry um so so what he basically does is he agrees to give you the map if you will help one of his friends that's been captured by the templars um and is being held in the chantry suffice it to stay suffice it to say you go to rescue his friend shit goes down it doesn't go very well his friend unfortunately has been made tranquil um which is basically when they they sort of um numb all the emotion out of a mage so they can't tap their real power their raw potential um suffice it to say your friend's been made tranquil um anders kind of goes a bit crazy and reveals that he has a spirit inside him called justice it's basically a sort of a spirit demon that he merged with he goes a bit crazy unfortunately he has to kill his friend cal but he does appreciate your help and ultimately he does agree to give you the maps and join your party um before then going to speak to Bartrand and start the Dark Deep Roads expedition, we also do decide to go to the Dalish camp to actually, you know, give the, the Dalish leader um, the amulet that we were given by uh, Flemeth. We go there and speak to the Dalish leader, uh, a woman called um, Keeper uh, Mereth Merethari, and um, she agrees um, to take the amulet, but it needs to have a special ritual performed on it. Now, this ritual is performed by an, another Dalish elf who we meet called Meryl, and she ultimately becomes our companion. Now, she is actually a blood mage, and she she does the ritual on the top of the mountain, and it actually reveals that Flemeth had put a part of her soul or spirit into the amulet, and that has actually brought her back to life, because in Dragon Age Origins, we actually killed her in the form of a dragon at the request of Morrigan, because Flemeth was going to take over Morrigan's body, um, in order to stay young and live forever um but anyway that is how flemeth got around what happened in origins which i thought was incredibly clever and really smart of the writers to do that she basically appears she gives us a little bit of advice and sprouts you know spouting riddles and blah 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 then turns into a dragon and flies off we then go and meet bartrand and we do start our expedition into the deep uh, roads as we go in there and we're exploring through and we're going down into the uh, ruins, really old um, sort of dwarven ruins, we discover a new form of lith lithium, uh, a raw form of lithium, and it's red, and it's in the form of a statue. Now, um, Bartran picks it up and something suspicious happens to his his character ultimately it, it sort of corrupts him he ends up betraying Varric locking us into the ruin um, and running off with this special idol special relic and we ultimately have to sort of fight our way out and find our way out of the ruins you know by finding a key and in the process we discover um a rock wraith who we ultimately betray and kill and also we discover all this treasure and eventually after a few weeks get out of the deep roads and return to Kirkwall and that is the end of act one now in act two um, that continues three years later and what's happened is using that treasure Hawk has been able to um, gain wealth gain power and is now actually has bought his way into nobility and his family have moved into the Hawk estate in Hightown um, in act two we actually meet two new companions we meet Fenris who is an ex slave and an elf warrior um, and he's on a mission to sort of um, escape or possibly kill his old master and we also meet Isabella who is a human and she's a pirate and her ship was ship shipwrecked um, as she was looking for a special kind of um, relic which I will mention more of later because that becomes a big plot point but she it basically went wrong when she was trying to find this relic and <coughs> the person who hired her is very pissed off and is out for blood if she can't get this relic to save her own ass now the overall arching um, sort of idea in this is after the three years the tensions between the mages and the templars is worsening now the templars are led by knight commander Meredith and she is 
slowly putting more control and more restrictions on mages, curfews, strict punishments and executions for those mages that turn to blood magic, stronger controls on the circle of magi, forcing mages to become sort of... Um, tranquil um, and those kinds of things so tensions are definitely definitely at worsening and a lot of that can be seen in a lot of the side missions that, that that you take that take place where you see mages that have been abused and templars that have been killed by bull mages and it's, it's just you can see it escalating you can feel it bubbling under the surface at the same time as well, there is another heightened tension because a group of Kunari had been um, shipwrecked uh, on the coast. Their dreadnought had been shipwrecked and they have um, been granted, you know, passage or have been granted um, permission to stay in Kirkwall in a sort of cordoned off area in Lotan. Now they are led by a, uh, a, a leader, his name is the Arishok, that's the name of him, um, and um, they're basically, they remain in the city, they don't leave, and a lot of people are very suspicious, of, particularly the leaders, of why they're staying and why they're remaining. As time progresses, a lot of people start to convert to the Kun, which are the beliefs of the Kunari. A lot of elves, a lot of blood mages, a lot of a lot of different people are going to them for protection, for guidance. The Viscount, the leader of Kirkwall, looks on this with, with suspicion. And the Chantry as well are very suspicious of this because they, they believe they're losing a lot of people. Um, a lot of their faithful. Now what happens is the son of the Viscount, a guy called Seamus, um, actually converts to the Kun and wants to live with them. Ultimately, um, he is he is captured in a sort of a conspiracy and he is actually murdered by um, Sister Patrice who is a, a Chantry sister. She's trying to use his murder to frame the, the Kunari in order to start a conflict and a war. Now Seamus is killed, the Kunaru react in vengeance and kill Sister Patrice and the Arishuk uses this as an excuse um, to basically um, decide to purify the city because he's been looking on with discontent at all the corruption and, and crime um, and greed and, and everything that exists within the city and he decides basically to take over control of the city so he starts attacking. It ends in a bloodbath, um, the Kunari are attacking people in the street and ultimately with the help of the Knight Commander Meredith and also the uh, first Enchanter or Orsino we actually fight our way to the keep unfortunately we arrive there too late and the Viscount is actually murdered he's beheaded and ultimately um, it is revealed that the Kunari were actually in Kirkwall because they were looking for a special relic which was called they were looking for a special relic which was called the Tomb of Coslin. Now that's the relic that Isabella was actually trying to get. We do actually find the, the relic with Isabella and she does a runner. Now that pissed me off because I, I romanced Isabella um, as my male hawk. So I felt betrayed, but she does come back with, with the book, with the tomb, um, and she doesn't actually betray Hawk in the end, and she gives the book to the Arishuk, and you're thinking at that point, great, everything's resolved, he's got the tomb, no problem. Sadly, he still wants vengeance, and he actually says that he wants to take Isabella as a prisoner, and all, we can only assume torture and kill her. I refuse, um, there's no way I'm giving over uh, Isabella, and ultimately um, Hawk is forced into a fight with the Arishuk, um, I do actually defeat him and kill him, and the uh, Kunari actually leave Kirkwall, and at the end of it, um, Hawk is declared the champion of Kirkwall, and in the process gains the respect of the Templars, the Mages, and the Chantry, and that's the end of Act 2. Act 3 continues three more years later. Now, um, it's revealed at the beginning of Act 3. Um, now, this is the beginning of the Mage Templar War, and this is really when all those tensions come to a head. Now, after the Viscount was killed, Knight Commander Merith Meredith has taken control of the city. She's taken over control of the leader. 
she's basically put the templars in a position of authority and she's clamped down on the mages significantly and she's sort of become this sort of tyrannical leader now this has led to to an increase in sort of mage unrest mage rebellion some mages have actually turned to blood magic in desperation even some templars are suspicious of meredith um and sort of see her as a bit a bit crazy and a bit power hungry and, and there is a conspiracy against her which which we do uncover um ultimately um because of meredith's actions anders basically decides um that enough is enough and there's no way to actually negotiate with meredith that she won't listen and he actually takes drastic action and stupidly because i was so angry with him he ends up destroying the chantry he com he plants a bomb or a magic bomb or something and completely obliterates it destroys it killing the glan cleric um athene elthina in the process um and of course the reactions to it are catastrophic meredith declares something called the right of a norman she basically accuses all mages of being part of a conspiracy she blames all mages for the actions of one mage and ultimately wants to go go through the city and cleanse the city of all magic and all mages at the same time as well the the first enchanter orsino is is begging her not to do this and ultimately both of them turn to hawk to make a decision now at this point i saw meredith as a crazy power hungry bitch <laughs> so i ended up siding with the mages because i believe that all not all mages were bad and that a lot of the mages were forced into blood magic because of the situation because of the desperation that they were in so i side with the mages um it doesn't go well suffice it to say um i am able to fight off the mages uh, that sorry i am able to fight off the Temp templars initially um i ultimately spare anders life even though i was very angry at him i can't bring myself to kill a friend and i decided to allow him to fight in my team to regain um some form of of atonement and um, by helping me stop this bloodbath a bloodbath does happen and the templars go on a killing rampage killing all the mages a lot of the mages in desperation turn to blood magic and start sort of creating monsters and calling demons a lot of innocent mages are killed in the process too unfortunately first enchanter orsino um, after seeing all of his mage brothers and sisters completely uh, massacred ultimately does turn to blood magic and he does become this sort of abomination this monster drawing on all these dead all the dead bodies of of his um, brothers and sisters and he becomes this monster that sadly we do ultimately have to fight and kill we then fight our way through the city or with all my companions and the aid of of you know some of the mages that we sh we've saved along the way and ultimately we do face off against knight commander meredith and um it's at this point that that her um her own templars start to realize just how crazy and power hungry she is and even her her lieutenant commander um commander uh, captain cullen um actually turns against her and tries to relieve her of command she turns around and accuses them of, of being blood mage thralls and she pulls out this sword and it's revealed that it's actually made or it's enchanted with the red lith lithium that we found in the deep roads which bartrand's brother had used it had basically corrupted him and ultimately we were forced to track down varick's brother and varick ended up killing him um in revenge because he just he just went crazy Bartrand just went mad now unfortunately it's done the same to meredith and it's twisted and warped her mind and she sees blood mages everywhere she sees enemies everywhere there's no way to talk reason to her and ultimately we do have to stand off against her and we do fight her um it's a pretty tough fight because she's she sort of you know powered up by all the lyrian but we do defeat uh, meredith ultimately uh, her sword breaks the red lyrian Lyri um sort of possesses her body and she is turned into the sort of red statue um sort of posed in a very you know tortured kind of face and tortured position ultimately um the templars at this point they could arrest us but looking at what we've done to meredith they kind of back off and they allow um hawk and his companions to leave the city 
It then flashes back to Varric and um, Cassandra, and Cassandra has changed her opinion of of Hawk. At the beginning, she saw Hawk, Hawk as sort of a villain, um, but by the end, she actually realizes that the Mage Templar War was not started by Hawk; that he actually tried to stop the war, but that ultimately it it occurred um, because of the actions of um, Knight Commander Meredith, Anders, and the, you know the Red Lyrium, the the Idol. Um, um, and ultimately, at the end of it, um, it is revealed that the, um, the the circle of Magi have become completely independent, that they've gone crazy. Um, and the Templars as well have also become independent of the Chantry. And there is, uh, they, they are in the midst of an all-out, um, you know, Mage Templar war which has spread um, across the world and ultimately Cassandra is trying to track down and find the Grey Warden and also Hawk, the champion of Kirkwall in the hopes that Hawk will be able to talk some reason into the mages with him being a mage himself and with him being there at the, the start of the events and that is how Dragon Age 2 actually ends and leads into Dragon Age Inquisition. Okay, so that's basically the story of Dragon Age 2. Um, hope you guys um, enjoyed that or found it interesting. I tried to keep it as punchy and detailed as possible, um, as I say. All right, guys and girls, so I will definitely be back um, with Dragon Age Inquisition gameplay, reactions, all that good stuff. It comes out on the 21st of November, which is on Friday. I absolutely can't wait for it. I'm so excited. I really am. It's going to be amazing. All right, guys and girls, have a great day as always. Take care and... As always, happy gaming! Yeah. much grayer than that and it predominantly revolves around the escalating tensions between the mages and the templars which basically comes to a head at the end of the game so the story spans about a decade in total about 10 years and it follows the experiences of the main character a guy called garrett hawk um, who ultimately becomes known as the champion of kirkwall now in my game i played as a mage character because that just felt like it it was right for the story and, and for, for his experiences. Now the actual game is split into three acts, so I'm going to tell you basically what happens in each one. Now we are we do obviously start with a prologue, and at the beginning of the story, um, it sort of shows you um, two characters. You've got Cassandra Pentagast, and she's basically a seeker, sort of a warrior type character, and then you have a dwarf by the name of Varric Tethras. Now it starts off with an interrogation, and Cassandra is basically interrogating Varric to find out where the champion of Kirkwall Hey guys and girls, how's it going? So this is my second Dragon Age video. This is on Dragon Age 2 and it's the story so far. So the aim of this video again is just to give you guys a bit of an overview of the main story and characters in Dragon Age 2. Um, and it's basically aimed at those people that haven't played the first or second game and are planning to play Inquisition. Um, or you are playing it right now if you're in North America, call me jealous. Um, or if you have played the games but you, you just want a bit of a recap. Cap. So suffice it to say, there are spoilers galore in this video. All right, so let's get cracking. Let's get on with it anyway. So this story, um, obviously, within this video is unique to me. This is a Bioware game, guys. So the decisions that you make in the story, uh, during the story, do very much affect the events that occur. So while there are certain key things that are the same across the board, there are certain decisions that I made in this story that are going to be a little bit different. So Dragon Age 2 is very, very different to Dragon Age 1. It's got a very different overall sort of feel and theme, whereas Origins revolves around this idea of a great evil that must be fought and, and killed, Dragon Age 2 is much more about the characters and it's a lot more about political intrigue and, and human weaknesses and it's not really a black or white tale of good and evil, it's, it, it's 